Welcome to the Ultimate Warrior Crafting Adventure, guided by the expertise of DAGs and powered by the Jewelers Crypto Guild. Today, we dive into the heart of battle, exploring the countless paths to glory through the art of the warrior build. Remember, in this realm, RNG reigns supreme, offering a unique journey each time. Will you follow Dags into the fray? The quest for the perfect warrior build starts now. All right, so go ahead and introduce yourself. All right, my name's Dags. I am one of the leaders of the Jewelers Guild and uh, I've been into combat since it started. So uh, Zane and I figured we would try and extract some of my knowledge and get it put on paper. All right, sounds good. I'm so looking forward to this. I really want to learn how to build heroes. So a lot of these builds I'm gathering, these are builds that without all the information we have, we're going to build these based on how you build your heroes and how you became one of the elite combat players out there right right yeah and these are just supposed to be beginner builds anything we have can be improved but for a, if you have just a minimal amount of knowledge about the game if you go and grab a rare hero and you try to follow this uh you should be able to to uh build a hero that's pretty productive as of you know march 21st 2024 where we only have the void hunts where it is the boar hunts and the bad mother cluckers and we're limited to level 20. yeah all right so our first build we got a warrior here and it's got a build name so it says two hands one axe you want to elaborate how we came up with this name uh so this is going to be a two-handed build uh and if you've spent any time in the on the internet um in the 2000s anytime there's a two something and a one something uh it's just straight mischief so <laughs> that's kind of where where we came up with this it's just we're gonna have a two-handed build and it's it's just going to um do some disruptive damage to the opposing team keep them on their feet huh yep <laughs> and it a lot of it is forcing it it could force heals um and it's just it's just kind of a massive damage damage we all like damage yes sir so we got here on the next one we have the subclasses so explain why a subclass would be important when building a hero yeah at the time of being able to build this we can't use subclass abilities so those weren't taken fully into consideration when we were doing this build so what you basically need from the subclass is your chance at stack stat growth so uh the magic users give you a lot of wisdom and intelligence with this build, we need more strength, endurance, dexterity, and vitality. And so we need those secondary chances to hit every once in a while to maximize the effectiveness of this hero. And in those stats, if you're using a magic user, basically you're going to get, I think most of them have a vitality sub uh, secondary subclass chance of around 12%. But if you go with one of the melee classes, the vitality chances are higher. And they a lot of them do have pretty high endurance chances, but you're not going to hit on those strength or dex rolls if you're if you're using a, a pure caster. So you kind of want to stay away from the priest, the wizard, scholar, seer, those kinds of classes. Sounds good. So the subclasses, it just gives you better boost so you can get the stats you want. Correct. And that's why I said basic, because if you hit a summoner, a sage, or... Um, uh, you know, one of the, what's the, why am I blanking on? Well, I guess the other ones are kind of versatile. So yeah, if you hit like a summoner or sage, uh, it's not going to be the end of your build because they have naturally higher low bottom thresholds. Their floors for stat growth are higher. Sounds good. So on here, I see we have abilities. So now none of the abilities are useful yet, but what's the importance of trying to get these abilities when summoning if we're not able to use them? sure most of these are um abilities that increase damage or 
uh, stall teams, but the importance here is you're doing damage as well because the two-handed basic attack is so strong that when you're starting critical aim, you do an attack before you get the crit rate. So these were kind of built with the exception of second wind and resurrection. They were built around the ones that you're doing damage as you're using them. So it's nothing like while speed would be useful, you're not attacking when you activate speed. It's you use the turn to activate the bonus and it's kind of like a, um, it's a standard buff where you're not doing any damage. So we kind of stayed away from those with the active abilities and then the passive abilities. Um, you have Duelist and Clutch, which increase damage. Foresight's good because you're not getting hit. Um, and then you have things like Clear Vision, which prevents you from being blinded. You don't want this class to be blinded. Fearless doesn't let you use any of your abilities. Um, and then those passives where you have like Efficient Intimidation. Um, efficient, you're using more abilities because they cost less mana. Intimidation's making your enemies weaker. Um, and then Toxic Giant Slayer, they add to the amount of damage that you inflict. If this is a DPS massive damage um, build, we're going to take any damage we can get. And then last, last Stand and Second Life can provide you with a unique opportunity where your healer can maybe pay less attention to this hero because it's not really going to matter if they die. And we're building, we're building uh, vitality. So with those stats, when they give you a percentage of health back, we're going to anticipate having a good chunk of health so that 50% on this hero would be much more effective than like a 50% health on a wizard coming back. Just bigger numbers there. So it's all kind of with the thought of not missing, hitting, and doing damage. Sounds good. But none of these are available yet, but we still want to build for the future when they do become available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we know what for the most part, what they're going to do or what they should do. So we can kind of pick and choose what we're, what we can anticipate, what we're looking forward to. Sounds good. So let's get into the actual stats and where you're putting the stats. So now when you're summoning for this hero, if you're like aiming just to build this hero, I see you have quite a few different choices here of what stones you want to use, but your main choice is vitality. Can you help me understand that a little bit? Right. Yeah, we're going to be focusing on dexterity and strength for most of this. So if we can kind of put vitality on autopilot, um, it's never going to hurt having more more HP. Uh, so since we will be focusing on strength and dexterity, we know that those will be your two top primary stats. And it's kind of nice to have that boost on vitality where, like I said, you won't have to actively pay as much attention, attention to it after a time. And... Uh, I think you and I discussed these. We're going with the assumption that we're trying to build this here. We're actively trying to build this hero. So uh, I'm assuming these stones would be regular or higher. We're going to leave the lesser out of it. Um, and that these are probably rare or higher heroes. So a regular stone on vitality gives you a sufficient boost to your, both your primary and your subclass. So uh, you'd have a few extra hits that maybe you weren't expecting on vitality if you didn't stone. Sounds good. And so now growth stats, I see you picked vitality also on the growth stats. Now, a lot of people don't understand the importance of when you're summoning to try and get these growth stats in the right locations. Mm -hmm. So how important do you think that is to go after the proper growth stats? Yeah, so there's that green stat that gives you an automatic plus four. Uh, your vitality takes that full score into account starting at level one. So you're already seeing a bonus from having the plus four vitality for the green score um, when you when you move on to level two. So the shooting for the green stat and vitality is important because you can automatically benefit from it. And you'd see the same thing with intelligence, but um, this this class is built in mind that we're eventually going to deteriorate into basic attacks, and it's and it'll be fine. So I didn't push for the growth stat and intelligence. Um, and then the blue stat gives you, I, I believe it's a, oh, I can't, I can't actually remember. Is it a one and a half at, for your primary growth chance percent? And then like a two and a half for your sub? I can't remember, but the, we're pushing on vitality. When that's going to be combined with the stone, it just adds a little bit more of a bonus to, to the growth chance. And we're just going to be scraping by with as much of a, of a growth chance as we can get. And when you start taking these little bonuses like a stone and the the, the uh, growth score and a crystal, 
when you on their own, they're not that significant. But when you combine them, if they're all matched together to the same stat, it can be a pretty significant bonus. Yeah. And I also notice over here you got this two-handed weapon build. So you're building this based on the thought that you're going to have a two-handed weapon, which I think most two-handed weapons are probably going to be just straight damage weapons. Is that kind of what we're going for here? Yes. It's going to be either like a two-handed axe, two-handed sword, two-handed hammer, something like that. Um, actually, I can't remember if they can use the two-handed mace. I'm pretty sure they can. But yeah, um, and that's why you'll, as we move forward, you'll see a lot more points into dexterity than if we were going with a, with a standard like the mace and shield build. They wouldn't need as much dexterity. You take, as of the time of this recording, you do take severe penalties to dexterity by putting a, a two-handed weapon on. You also take severe penalties to speed, um, but we're not really building too much around agility uh, because at this point in the game, uh, from what I've noticed, adding um, adding the two-handed weapon to my to my speed isn't isn't a significant change with many of my warriors from what I've seen. Yeah. So, and then I notice, you know, after that we got our stone in there, we got our growth stat in there, and mm -hmm. I noticed level one through five, you also focused on vitality. Is that part of that whole putting it on autopilot so you don't have to worry about it the rest of the build or? Yes, yes. So want to get those vitality points early. Um, and if you notice on the right, I also have a note that says you may wish to bonus stat um, like three levels of int instead of strength to give you that much more mana. Uh, this build doesn't really focus on mana that much. But I mean, if you can get an additional gladiator strike in or something like that, uh, that could that could really pay off in the long run. So if you do want to pull off of strength a little bit and do some intelligence, um, I found there's kind of there's it seems like there's a significant difference in how much mana gain you get with a warrior if your intelligence, um, if you can hit that 22 intelligence mark instead of 15. Um, and what are we shooting for on this one? What was our target? Did we did we do a target for intelligence yeah, on this one? Yeah, we did a target. target. Target of 15. Yeah, the target's 15. So if you can find a way to get that to 20, 22 instead, uh, based off the calculations and assuming you have at least 10 wisdom, you're going to get one more mana point per level, if you, at least, if you can yeah. if you can somehow get your intelligence up to 22 instead of 15. Yeah, so switching it over to intelligent based on how you're growing. Mm -hmm. If you're growing really good, then switch them over to intelligence. Or if you just want to sacrifice a little bit of damage from the strength modifiers and go with some intelligence, because you might not even hit. Um, so, and, and to begin with, the the growth chances of intelli of mana for um, for warriors are already, they already are um, weighted so that you're going to see more of the small bonus instead of the medium or large. So kind of playing with fire versus if you get strength, that's just automatically more damage, but it all depends on your play style. Yeah. So for the first five level, we're going to crystal and then the bonus all in vitality. Correct. And then we're just going the Gaia's bonus or Gaia's blessing and strength and dexterity. Mm hmm. Yep. Strength for that damage output and dexterity. So you could effectively use your weapon. Sounds good. So I show you got six through eight, kind of the same here, but it looks like you switched over to endurance and intelligence. And then you got in the notes, yep. a heavy mana build. Uh, I meant to delete that. <laughs> all right. Um, all but maybe that, maybe that was referring to warriors in general. They use a lot of mana for their abilities right now. Uh, okay. So it always feels like you never have enough mana with the with the warrior. Uh, so like we did switch to three levels of intelligence. Uh, I found that if I do a few levels of intelligence, it's easier for me to hit that 15 mark. You might not. Um, so I mean, some people might even just ignore this intelligence, but I think I think it's really helpful to the build in the long run if you can at least hit that 15 marker with a warrior on intelligence and and because that gives you at least one additional mana point per level uh going forward 
And then we stoned endurance to give you more physical damage resistance. Um, the the warriors have good growth and endurance, uh, so that just gives you physical damage resistance. I don't really think there's much hope for the warrior with wisdom buffs uh, with with a wisdom modifier. So we just kind of stayed away with it, away from it, and just kind of accepted that um, if you see a caster, you're just gonna have to kill it or taunt it or whatever instead of trying to withstand attacks from it. So rather than going for the Wisdom, we went for the Endurance, which will already be high, which kind of gives you the ability to swap this out as kind of an off tank if your frontliner is is kind of, is, is in jeopardy. These guys can be moved forward and take a few hits. It's going to have high Dexterity, which gives it a high block rate already. So, and then, um, though I believe the Gorax and the Excalibur right now do have an increased chance to block when you equip it, or at least I think mine does. So just you'll have strong dexterity. This guy will have some some staying power, but having some endurance up there when when you're anticipating a potential move to the front line um, could be helpful. So we we did a few levels of endurance here uh, because we we feel I feel that at this point you'll have that twenty vitality mark, uh, and that's kind of a sweet spot for me with most of my my melee attackers. Sounds good. It show, shows your target is 20 decks. How important is it to hit that 20 decks by level 8? So the, uh, and now I'm questioning myself, I believe the minimum decks for a two-handed weapon, it's either 18 or 20. Um, I thought I had that off the top of my head. But you're going to take severe penalties and you're going to miss a lot if you don't have that 20 decks. So kind of reaching that point before level 10, which is where we're seeing our first boss fights, is pretty significant. You want to be able to fully utilize your weapon when you jump into the fights. It's not the end of the world if you're not there. You can always play catch up, uh, but I think for level 10, it's a nice target for a warrior, especially since their chances to land um, a, a, a stat increase on dexterity are, are pretty high. That makes sense. So I notice on here, you have your crystal in a separate spot from where you have your guy's Gaius Blessing and your bonus. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason behind that, or are we just hoping for those extra rolls? Uh, I didn't want to fully move away from Dexterity, but at this point you should be at your target. Uh, so we're moving into those those chances to hit on those just to, um, if we can get more Dexterity, we're going to take it. But at this point we're moving into, we're moving into luck uh, because crits will be killer on this build anytime you can crit. We're sticking with strength because we still need to maximize damage um and and because especially with strength being some of the bonuses that we add to to abilities or skills for warriors so we're sticking with strength we're stone and decks hoping we still get it awesome um what is that second status that agility um and so Wait, strength and decks is what you got the so the stone is on decks right but the the um, the guy is, the guy is, the guy is blessing. And endurance. Oh, I thought we were talking about level nine. Sorry. Okay. We're still, we're still on. I, I jumped ahead. My mistake. Yeah. We moved it over to endurance, uh, because we needed some of that staying power in case this guy does get switched to an off tank. So yeah, here levels six through eight, we're putting the crystal on endurance in case this guy does get moved up to tank to give the tank a breather. Don't want to keep him there. Um, because we're not going endurance and vitality all the way through, but yeah, we, we do want to give them some staying power plus endurance is added to gladiator strike. So if you find yourself using that, the extra, the extra points in endurance will be, will be helpful. All right. So we are on level on nine. nine. All right. Perfect. Still pushing strength, uh, still pushing dexterity, but just with a stone bonus or the crystal bonus. We, we, we hopefully we're at that 20 dex. Still want more dexterity because you're still not at a 100% hit rate. Maybe you'll never, I mean, you're still not even at like a 90% hit rate. So we're still, we still do want dexterity, but we did need to move into some other stats. Uh, you, you can't have a warrior who, with this kind of build, who's as slow as a knight. So we did put some, some points into agility and then luck. We want those, we want those critical hits if we can get them. Luck's one of the more difficult builds, one of the more difficult points to build if you're not doing it from like level one. Um, 
pretty much all heroes have have a <laughs> have a pretty low chance at hitting on luck, except for I think the thief and the bard um, is all I can think of right now. So we're gonna try and snag some of those luck points. Uh, we don't have a target. We're just trying to get as much luck and agility as we can. But we do have um, an HP target if we move on to level 10. Yeah, I was going to say, 10 where we got to get serious now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this is where you'll be entering your first boss fight at level 10. Uh, this build is, I mean, I find it a lot easier if you have at least 600 HP and 70 mana minimum. Okay, so... If you're not there, it's not the end of the world. You can still use this. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm using a knight who barely has 500 HP. He's still serviceable because his stats are nice. Okay, and if you kind of... Um, if you kind of uh, attuned your crystal to your abilities that you have high growth chances in, your stats should be pretty nice at this point too, especially considering that at level 10, you'll be getting your second rarity bonus. So you'll already have plus eight additional stats that you wouldn't see from a common so um and then i give you a few more targets there 27 straight strength 15 intelligence um and then there's a note there intelligence isn't make or break but it's the difference between getting one to three extra mana points per level and then if you can somehow hit 22 intelligence by the end of this build it'll be the difference between getting two to two to six additional spell points per level or mana points for a level so not make or break on intelligence but it is something you want to consider because the ability the skills for the warrior are fun <laughs> they do a lot of damage yeah and I, I like a lot of mana because i like once i get to that point where i'm just tanking them down real quick i, I don't like that i don't like the basic attacks <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we're going to be pushing strength here. You're going to be pushing dex. You're going to be pushing luck. So even the basic attacks should feel pretty good. All right. And it looks like we're pretty standard build up to 12, just keeping all the same. Yeah. So let's say I do have this warrior and he only has 500 health. Should I just start thinking about throwing him in the pit? Should I try and see if I should still level him? So I would, I would keep leveling him um just you can because oh man i had the math on their on their growth uh shoot i must have closed it i wasn't prepared but i believe you have when you have 20 vitality i believe even on a bad roll i think it i think we did the math to where you could get up to 60 hp like on a bad roll maybe it was 40. Maybe it was 40. Um, so you could catch up in a matter of two or three levels. You, you can. You can. So I wouldn't give up on it just yet. Um, you know, it's really like you've got to evaluate your strength and your decks at, and your, at this point. It's, it's really if your strength, if you're pushing level 15 and you're still like under 30 strength or something like that, it might be time to kind of give up on it. Um, but I don't think vitality is the end of the world. Um, we're not putting a lot of points into agility, so you might not be dodging as much. So, I mean, that health might be, might be needed, but if you do have low health, you can always pair this with a priest or something and they'll definitely be able to keep you alive. But it, it's also, it's a second line hero. It's a middle, it's, it's for the middle row. It's not up front. So That's there's, true. it, it not expected yeah. to take that many hits. Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely have heroes that are awesome that are under the HP thresholds that I set for myself. And I, I have fun, I have success. So, especially with these with these warriors, because sometimes you're just trading off that HP to do more damage and it still feels good. It's not gonna feel as good as the archer damage, but knowing that it can take hits is kind of a, kind of a bonus there. Yeah, and it's not meant to be a tank. So, I mean, DPSs generally don't have that much health anyway, so. Yeah. I, I could see giving some give there. Yeah. So now level 12 is where we hit the mother cluckers. And I see yep. you're still on the same build until after level 12. Right. So once you get past level 12, there's a lot of changes here. Can you kind of help me understand some of this a little bit? Sure. And I paired this hero with a, a tank knight and then just the, like an autopilot archer. And they were all level 11s and we still beat the chickens. So um if if you kind of if you understand when to do the damage and you can shift the uh shift the monsters around that'll give this this knight 
more chances to hit just the person in the front. So, yeah. So, um, I mean, we, we did a complete shift. We did do a shift. We are, we went back to boosting strength and crystalling strength. So at this point we're like, okay, you know, the setup's done. Let's, let's just bomb strength here. Uh, wanted a little bit more endurance because they do hit a little bit harder. And then we still wanted luck because we still want some crits. So we start crystalling strength because our target for strength goes from, I believe it was 27 um, up to 40 strength when we're hitting, when we're hitting level 15. Um, we want the endurance so we're not eating as many heals and it increases the damage of a lot of our abilities. But here you can also uh, do, you can also, instead of going for strength, you can always kick it back to vitality or dexterity and just lay off a strength for a few rolls if you're looking really good. Um, and then we hit 16, we kind of switch back, uh, going for a little bit more agility. The more turns you take when your enemy can't, it's just, I mean, you want to be hitting as many times as possible with this thing. So it's not lightning fast, but we're going to make it pretty quick. Um, and then we go back to back to vitality. We're still pushing strength. And then we finish it off with vitality, endurance, and strength. Because on the right-hand side, Gladiator Strike is a strength and endurance. Those bonuses are added to the damage. Uh, Gruff has a strength modifier for damage and chance to taunt. Okay, so Gruff being the one that makes you taunt and unstoppable for two turns. Um, if you're maxing out strength, it's gonna have it's gonna do more damage and it's gonna have a higher chance to taunt. Gruff is the best taunt in the game right now. Rapid onslaught, you need a lot of decks. You're trying to do four hits in a row, and each hit um, has, I believe, it has lesser accuracy. And then final blow, um, you're just hitting for a lot of damage, and I believe it just adds your strength modifier. So a lot of strength modifier the whole way through. So that's why we just kind of gunned for strength. But what's the point of strength if you can't hit? So we also gunned for dexterity. Yeah. So I see on your uh, skill build for the mad boars is a little different than for the mad mother cluckers. So okay. you want to go through real quick while you got this set up this way? Yeah, what was different? I thought they were clones of each other. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm just seeing it wrong here. Final blow, rapid onslaught. Oh, rough. Okay. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the nice things about this build. Uh, they originally planned on making us pay to, to uh, respec our skills. Um, that hasn't been implemented. Right now we get to choose every battle. We can change our skills. But this is one of those nice builds where you don't really have to. Um, Gruff is nice because it makes you unstoppable and it draws some of that damage off your tank and keeps that damage away from the back row, which is usually um, a lot squishier <laughs> than the front two rows. Gladiator Strike, if you use a basic attack before that, uh, it gives us a chance to bleed. And so that's nice because, I mean, our basic attacks are going to be doing a lot of damage with a two-handed weapon anyway. So you shouldn't feel like, oh man, I have to use a basic attack. It should be like, all right, here comes my warrior's basic attack. Um, and I think we're taking Juggernaut too, which increases your basic attack damage. Um, or no, it's Gladiator, not Juggernaut. Did we? No, yeah, it is Gladiator. Gladiator, which is is the skill two, which yeah. increases your basic attack damage. So um, that kind of that kind of feeds into your Gladiator Strike, and your Gladiator Strike, if you use it, also gives you an accuracy bonus to rapid onslaught so you could go a basic attack gladiator striking straight into rapid onslaught and it should just feel good your deck should be high enough to wear those hit um at level 11 i was seeing uh potential crits for rapid onslaught in above the 400s so um that's <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty nice for me and then final blow um it felt like final blow was just the move that paired best with the stats that we have so that's why i chose that one uh the the final tier is kind of expensive as far as mana goes so i don't really use it much um and so uh you can switch that one whenever you want i feel like yeah so these are basically set up it looks like you're like from what you're saying and everything this is all based on damage not much of this has anything to do with protection correct even gruff is 
essentially a taunt so they <laughs> if you're unstoppable you can't be confused you can't right you can't yeah. you can't have any of those negative buffs so it's very much an offensive based debuff like, for the team and buff for yourself so i might argue that the unstoppable is more important than the taunt so sounds good so it sounds like this warrior build is based solely on round damage yep so. yep just hit hard it's not even hit fast it's just hit hard and again and hit again and hit again <laughs> all right so later on we'll get more into your uh composition builds and we'll, that's when we'll get to see when this becomes really important mm -hmm. but is there anything else you want to add in as far as this build goes and what your overall thoughts are on it and why you choose it this way yeah um this is the first shot we have at a character who can use two-handed weapons so um we this this build might be might be filtered out when when other other classes are released but right now this is the hardest hitting two-handed weapon build that you can can use in the game um so of course we might make some changes here and there but I think until we see like a Dark Knight or a Dread Knight, I think we're, or maybe even a Dragoon, I can't remember if they can use a two-handed axe. No, they're just a two-handed spear. Until we see the Dread or the Dark Knight, I think I think we're gonna have, a, and subclasses, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this one. So just off of speculation, what if we never get a two-handed weapon? What if that's not in our luck rolls? Is this still worth building? If you don't get a two-handed weapon, pull off of dex. You don't need as much dex if you're using a one-handed weapon. You might want to put those points into agility. Um, well, maybe you don't have to pull off a of dex because you'll have a shield and that'll help you block. I don't know. Personally, when I don't have a two-handed weapon, uh, I I definitely I I don't try and I don't try and, <laughs> and, and kill myself with dex so much. I might stop at a dex of 18 instead of trying to get 20 and put maybe those stats in agility because if you're not going to be hitting it as hard you want to be hitting more frequently or luck to kind of get some some crits or intelligence you got to see that's where you're kind of like there's more options or intelligence so you could use more skills so yeah, and that brings me to the point of these builds these builds are just to give a general way to build heroes mm -hmm. if you kind of listen to the way dags is building his stuff and you take his advice on these and then kind of twist it into your own little build to adjust to yourself that's good these are a good starting place i can build it this way and then i can adjust it the way i want after i've learned correct yeah and if you just don't want to think and just want to make a hero that'll be serviceable grab yourself a rare grab yourself a stone follow the guide and you'll have yourself a time all right and if anyone's looking for this guide the link will be in the description. It is shareable to everybody. So, and it also, if you're part of the Jewelers Guild, we'll have copies of it in there as well. Definitely. And any other last thoughts before we wrap this one up? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like Warrior is the one class right now that's being over overlooked because uh, it doesn't do the same blast damage as as, a, as an archer does, and it it can tank. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of those defensive base powers that, or, or like manipulation powers that the knight has. So uh, if you find yourself not liking the warrior, I mean, give this one a try. You might like it. I hated the warrior before this build. So yeah, <laughs> now it's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, I need to give it a shot. I'm not playing any warriors, but with this build, it looks like it could, could be a good option for me. Uh, and a poorly statted warrior is just not going to work. That's the problem with the warrior. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let's wrap this up. We do have some other builds we're going to get to and get released out to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more builds like this. And have a good day.